Hi, my name's Stephen, and today we're looking at the last chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. At first look, it looks like it's a bit of a junk drawer, of just different things that Paul needs to quickly wrap up before he finishes his letter. Uh, it says uh, the collection for the saints, plans for travel, fun instructions and greetings. Four little sections with just a few verses each. You think, oh, I'll quickly skip over that. They obviously don't mean much. But you know what? Paul decided that he was going to include them in the letter to, the, to this church he loves. And God decided that he was going to put it in the Bible for us to examine. That we might see God's character expressed through it and that we might be taught and instructed by it as well. So I had great joy this week uh, diving into it, looking at each verse, kind of digging in, saying, Holy Spirit, what is it you want to say to me? And I'm just going to grab a few of those things and uh, really exercise some discipline, just literally just talk about two of those things uh, for us uh, as we go into our days today. So the first one I look at is the collection uh, for the saints. Giving our money, examining our kind of material resources in the light of God is something the Bible gets us to do time and time again. We could think that true religion or true spirituality is kind of worshipping, singing songs of worship and praying and reading our Bible. And those are all things that are part of it. But time again, God said, but also, what do you do with the things that are in your hand? Giving of those is also very spiritual. And uh, Paul kind of gives us some very uh, clear ways in which we can see that and some clear ways about how we're to do it. So, hey, you know what? It's a spiritual thing. It's something you should do weekly as part of your worship to God. And uh, it's not something that should be neglected or just brought to you every now and again. No, it's pretty a regular part of our relationship uh, with God. So, hey, weekly, consider what you're going to set aside. What are you going to store up for the giving, giving to those who are less fortunate than you, giving to the mission and the work of God? And it, yes, it is something we have to plan. Because so if we don't plan, either we don't do it well, or maybe we don't do it at all. And therefore, planning is needed involved in it. And uh, Paul mentions the fact that it's the something you should do at the beginning of the week. That's that sense of priority around it. I heard that phrase very early on in my Christian life about giving what is right, not what is left. It's very easy to think, OK, I'll just see what I've got at the end of the month and just empty out my wallet into the bucket. Or, you know, I'll see what I can have left for God. And uh, that's not the Bible. Bar says, no, you're to give your first fruits. You're to give your priority to God, giving what is right, what he deserves, what we give out of uh, uh, faith and out of uh, kind of genuine uh, thoughtfulness and prayerfulness as opposed to a leftover act at the end of a month or end of a week. No, it's something we do right up top saying, God, I want to give you my best. I want to give it out of faith. Let me encourage you to be looking at that. What does your worship in terms of finances look like right now? Are you giving your first and best? If you are, praise God. And uh, keep asking for faith as you do that. And uh, if you're not, then this is an opportunity to say, God, give me faith to go on this adventure with you to help be as Paul is encouraging us to be in this letter to the Corinthians. Let me pick up another thing. Paul's making some plans for travel. The way he talks about it is so intriguing. Here's the few fra phrases he used. He says, I intend, I use the word perhaps, I hope, if the Lord permits... Paul, who's close to God, knows the mind and heart of God as much as any of us probably, uh, even then speaks with such humility about the plans that he makes. I love it. That sense of if God wills, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make plans. I'm going to be ambitious for him. But you know what? Ultimately, my destiny, my life in his, is in his hands. I'm going to pray that way. I'm going to speak to others in that way that my expectation is, God, you do your thing. How quickly we can be surprised when our plans don't work out. But Paul's very quickly say, I'm going to submit it all to him. I've got my plans to travel to go and see this person, that person. But God, you direct my steps. How today are you submitting your steps to God? I said two. I'm going to do one, one last thing. The last phrase I'm going to pick up is from verse 14. It says, let all you do be done in love. I love how Paul just takes this amazing kind of uh, truth that goes right throughout the scriptures and just puts it in one sentence. Let all that you do be done in love. We can do good things, we can do right things, but all of them must be done in a place of loving God and loving other people. One thing I love to do is just at the end of my day, just go back through my day and say, God, what was the motive behind the things that I did today? Was it for my good, for my pride? Was it for someone else? Or was it out of genuine love for you, Jesus, and love for the people around me? Keep showing me, Jesus, to be more like yourself. You are the God of love. You are, God, you are love itself, it says. You know, God is love. How amazing. And we made his image, made to be like him, reborn to be like him. How do we make sure that we're loving him in all that we do? Keep asking God's help as you work that out. 
I hope you've been blessed by this. Let me encourage you, go back to that chapter, dig into it for yourself. What other truths might God uncover as you ask him to highlight them to you?